What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking another look at the upcoming One X Player X1. Now that I've had a few days to mess around with this, kind of get a feel for how everything's going to function on this device, I figured I'd go ahead and make a second video. And some of you out there might not be familiar with the One X, but basically what we've got here is a 10.95 inch display with detachable controllers. It also functions as a Windows tablet and a laptop with their detachable keyboard system. They are offering this right now over on Indiegogo with a couple different RAM, storage, and CPU configurations. I've actually had a really good time with this. I think the main draw for me is this is actually powered by a brand new Intel Core Ultra CPU. You can pick one up with the Core Ultra 5 135H or the Core Ultra 7 155H. But obviously, when looking at this with the controllers attached, it definitely looks like a larger handheld. Now these controllers easily come right off, they slide right on the side, and they connect to the device using these pogo pins. These also contain hall-based analog sticks and hall-based triggers, plus as you saw, we've got a little bit of RGB. But when it's time to get some work done, you can use their detachable backlit keyboard with a built-in trackpad. And this is really awesome, it also folds up to protect that screen, it's basically a folio case. And around back, we've got another magnetic cover to kind of help protect everything. Plus, it's got a built-in kickstand, so you can just kind of fold this out so you can set this thing up on the desk super easily. And with the X1, they did add quite a bit of I.O. because over here on this side, we've actually got a micro SD card slot and a full-size USB 3.2 port. Moving over to the other side, we've got two USB 4 ports that do work at 40 gigs. So connecting an eGPU over USB 4 is super simple with this. But up top, we've also got an Oculink port. And this is going to go hand in hand with their new One X GPU. I recently did a video kind of showing that off with the X1 and another mini PC that also has an Oculink port. And yeah, you can really up that GPU performance, enabling higher resolutions and higher settings with your AAA games. And like I mentioned, One X will be offering a couple different variants of the X1, but the one I have here is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 5 135H. So this is their lower end variant. We've got 14 cores, 18 threads, and with this we get those four performance cores up to 4.6 gigahertz, eight efficiency cores up to 3.6, and two low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. We also get that brand new Arc iGPU with eight XE cores, and this will do up to 2.2 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X at 7,467 megatransfers per second, a 120 hertz, 10.95 inch LTPS display with a resolution up to 2560 by 1600, one terabyte M.2 SSD, a 65 watt hour battery with 100 watt fast charging. And so far, I've actually been able to get some pretty decent performance out of this. We are gonna be testing some more games, but real quick, I wanna give you a look at their One X console they have built in here. It allows a lot of tweaking and tuning for the new X1. There's several different ways to access the One X console on this device, but I usually just tap the turbo button up top. It's going to bring it on screen even while you're playing a game. Top section here is going to be our TDP. We can go from 5 watts up to 28. Now I will tell you, when this is plugged into the wall, it actually boosts up to 35, which does allow for better performance. We've also got a section here to customize our own fan curves if you don't like the one that's built in, but it does a pretty decent job. Vibration settings, we can also change the resolution directly from One X console. We also have access to RGB control for these controllers here. And uh, we've got a lot of different settings. You can also go with a solid color if you want to. The X1 also has a gyroscope built in and from the One X console, we can calibrate it, turn it on and off. We can set up a hotkey so you can enable it at any time while you're playing a game. But one of the most important things here is our turbo function for the CPU. We can enable it or disable it directly from here at any time. And I'll tell you, when it's disabled, it's gonna send a lot more power to the new iGPU. And in most cases that I've been testing recently, we do need some more power on that GPU as opposed to the CPU. Now there are some games that's not gonna matter too much, but this can definitely help out with a lot of the stuff on the market right now. Taking a closer look at these included controllers, this uses a rail system to kind of slot them right down in the side of the uh, X1. Plus we've got these pogo pins here to make contact. We've also got hall-based analog sticks and linear triggers. These have around 1.8 millimeters of throw, so these are actually really nice for playing racing games, and it works out really well. And of course, when it comes to this D-pad, it's actually using micro switches, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it does have a swappable top. You can go with the traditional or a dish style, and I'll give you a listen here.
you can definitely hear those switches working. And again, I'm not a huge fan of micro switches with these D-pads, but the way they've got this setup actually works out. It's a little raised, so the roll on this is pretty nice. Here we have Street Fighter 6, medium settings, 1080p. Now, for some reason, I can't get this game to go to a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. I guess it's not built in. But using that built-in D-pad, you can see I'll pull these moves off quite easily. And I think it's because they do have it raised up a bit. So usually with these micro switches and controllers, the D-pad is almost flush with the controller itself, not giving you a lot of play with it. But since they've got it raised up, it's actually got some really nice action, and uh, for fighting games, I really haven't run into many issues at all so far. But this isn't going to make me want to swap my main controller over to micro switches. It's nice and all, but I still prefer a conductive pad for my D-pad. The next thing I wanted to show off were some benchmarks that I ran on the X1. And keep in mind, we are working with the lower end version with that Intel Core Ultra 5 135H. And with these benchmarks, we are at 28 watts. Single core, 2,293, multi, 10,940. Now I know we can get much better out of this by upping that wattage. Like when this is plugged in kind of dock mode, it'll do up to 35 watts and we can get a much higher score here, but I wanted to keep on battery. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid and this was not impressive for this one here. We're only at 24,182. Just to put this into perspective for you, the Ryzen 7 7840U with the 780M iGPU, same wattage, around 28,000. But when I moved over to Firestrike, we started going up a bit. Total score here, 7,596. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 3,391. This is a really good Time Spy score for an iGPU. Again, just to put it into perspective, the 7840U best score I've ever gotten out of that chip at around 50 watts was 3400 at a Time Spy. And of course, with some more wattage thrown at this chip, we could probably take it up a bit, but now I wanted to get into some real world gaming. And the first game we have here is Spider-Man Remastered. 1200p low settings with Intel's XESS set to balance, not too bad. We can get 60 out of this constantly if we drop it down to 800p because we're working with a 16x10 display, but I wanted to keep that resolution up to see what it does, and it's not bad at all. Just to make this whole testing section a little easier on me, I'm going to go ahead and set the tablet down. We're not in dock mode, we're still on battery, but I am using an external Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. So here's Shredder's Revenge, and the reason I wanted to just show this off was just power management on that CPU. So the TDP is set at 28 watts from a 1X console, but we don't need that much to run a game like this. We're up to around 9 watts right now, and I'm sure if I took this down to let's say 7 watts, just total TDP, we could run this game at full speed. Checking out my favorite game, Skyrim, just wanted to make sure it would handle it. 1200p, high settings. Again, we are at 28 watts, but we're only around 25 right now. This is a very CPU intensive game. And as you can see, it's gonna handle it just fine. And by the way, with this one, I do have turbo on that CPU completely disabled. Next up, we've got Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, 1200p, low, turbo boost is off, and I do have Intel XESS set to balance. We're really close to running this right there at 60, and at 800p, it can definitely do it, but it's very noticeable because we've got a large display here, 10.95 inches, 1600p, and going from, let's say, 1200p, which we're running the game at right now, down to 800 it's very noticeable as opposed to something with a 7-inch screen, which most of the other handhelds on the market do have. But with a little more wattage, we could definitely stick this right at 60. And of course, we had to test out PAL World. 800p low turbo off. And without any mods, the only real resolution scale that we have here is DLSS. There are mods for FSR and XESS, but I didn't install any. And I'm sure with XESS on, it would definitely help out with this, but I did have to drop that resolution down. Now again, I have Turbo Boost off, but with it on, we actually don't see this kind of performance because that GPU just can't get enough power at 28 watts. Basically, the CPU's gonna hog all of that power and that just can't send enough to that GPU to clock up higher than 1400 megahertz. 
And that's something I've been talking to One X player about with these new Core Ultra chips. We do need some kind of software to allow us to kind of disable some cores, because right now we've got 14 cores and 18 threads. For a lot of these games, we don't need that many cores and threads. So it would be really nice to have something built into One X console to allow us to disable some cores instead of turning turbo all the way off. Let's say we could keep our four performance cores and disable some of the efficiency cores because we want that clock to go up on the CPU and GPU at the same time. And at 28 watts with all of those cores kind of fighting for power, it's just not gonna do it. And as soon as they get that new BIOS update and One X console over to me, I will be able to do my full review on this. Right now, I'm working with the lower end prototype model with that Core Ultra 5 135H. Get my hands on the Core Ultra 7 155H would be really nice because it does offer a little better performance. And if I'm able to get my hands on that one, we will be doing some comparisons between the 135 and the 155. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the One X Player X1, I'll leave some links down below to their official website and Indiegogo. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this in my final review, let me know in the comments. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.